Christmas season. Christmas is almost here, and the Lord is doing wonderful things. And to Jesus be all the glory. Today, I'm talking about how to develop the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. Because, you know, the gift does not guarantee heaven, but the fruit does. So if someone has the gift, let's say, of faith, well, that does not guarantee that they'll make heaven. But if they have the fruit of faith, ah, that's different. So we're talking about the fruit now, the fruit of the Holy Spirit and how to develop that in our lives. So thank you for being with me this wonderful day. I pray the Lord would bless you and strengthen you through his wonderful word. Now let's pray, wonderful Lord, thank you. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your power. Thank you for your wonderful strength. Oh, dearest Jesus, strengthen us in the Holy Spirit. Strengthen our inner man in you, Lord, today. We give you the praise, the glory, and the honor. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. All right, let's go to John 15. The Gospel of John, chapter 15. Now, I want to say, the Bible begins and ends with fruit. In Genesis 2 and in Revelation 22, we see fruit. So the Bible begins with fruit, the Bible closes with fruit. And the fruit of the Spirit, how important, oh, so important it is in our lives. So the Lord said in John 15, beginning at verse 5, I am the vine. You are the branches. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, and cast them into the fire, and they are burnt. So here we see very, very clearly that the Lord declares we are to bear fruit for his kingdom. We must bear fruit. I'm the vine, you're the branches. He that abides in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Now, um, it's got to be planted properly. Before we can bear fruit for the Lord, our, our lives must be planted properly. And the Bible tells us how to do that. So before we can talk about how to bear fruit and have fruit, let's talk about being planted. So Psalm, the first Psalm, Psalm 1, verse 3, and I'm going to show you, show you Psalm 92 also, 13 and 14. But let's look at Psalm 1. In fact, I'm going to read the whole first portion rather than just verse 3. Blessed is the man, verse 1, blessed is the, is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. So this is the way to be planted. You can't be planted properly. Not one of us can be planted properly if we are living among sinners. So blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. So God says, come out from among them and be separate, and then I'll receive you. What, what fellowship has light with darkness? So it's impossible to be planted right if we're associating with the world. If we have fellowship with darkness, it's impossible to be planted properly. So it says here, blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor is sitting in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law, is in the word of God. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night, and then, and he shall be like a tree planted properly. See? So 
When we walk away from the world, we say no to the world and the sins in the world and the ways of the world, and we begin to meditate upon the word as we receive it, study it, read it, keep receiving it, and so forth. And now it becomes our delight. God's word becomes our delight. When you open the Bible, joy fills your heart. Peace fills your heart. Your, your, your delight is in the Bible. It's in God's word. Now that is the way to be planted properly. Because it says in his delight, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. In his law that he meditate day and night. And then he shall be like a tree planted. Where? By the rivers of water. That bringeth forth his fruit in a season. His leaf also will not wither. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. So, so, shall prosper. so there's fruit in that person's life. And Jesus said when we're planted, when we abide in him, we will bear fruit. But we see now how to be planted. Look at Psalm 92 also. Gives us some wonderful truth here about that we have to be you know, planted properly. So Psalm 92, 13 and 14 says, Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the course of our God. So, okay, it's wonderful to read the Bible, to love the Bible, but we also have to love God's people. We have to be among the right people, the fellowship of the saints. That's why it says, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. So going to church is very important because that gives us fellowship with the saints. Remember that in the book of Acts, it it says how the new disciples were learning the doctrine and going from fellowship to fellowship, from house to house. So there was fellowship in the early church. That's what kept them together because fellowship strengthens what God gives us. And fellowship keeps what God gives us. Without fellowship, we could not survive. We need the fellowship of the saints. The strength we receive one from another. The comfort we receive one from another. Very important. So those that be planted in the house of the Lord. So not only is it important to have the word in you, you have to have the fellowship of the saints as a part of your life. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. Wow. They shall be fat and flourishing. That word fat means, you know, full of health spiritually and flourishing. So <clears throat> I, you know, I used to know people who neglected the church so much they actually became weird. I'm just being really raw with you. So they, 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 they were so in the Bible and so in the Word, but no fellowship of the saints. They could not really participate with the life of the, of the Spirit, the life of the church, because Jesus is the head of the church. See, so we need each other. We need the body. So th- that is sadly happening again, where people are neglecting the house of the Lord because they say, well, I don't know where to go. No, you can find the right place. Of course you can where Jesus is loved, glorified, his word preached fully, that the full gospel, the full mind of God is preached. There's many good churches all over the world, frankly. Large churches, small churches. Just find the one that fits you. Find the one that really you're comfortable with. And you will, you will, you, you'll flourish. So we need both. We need both. All right. Now, something else. Uh, the identity of the fruit is in the vine. Because Jesus said, I am the vine, you're the branches. So when the fruit begins to, mani- to manifest, Jesus is the one that really produces it. So he produces it, we bear it. He gives it, we show it. So the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of Jesus. It's all Jesus coming out, Jesus being revealed. Your life is, is, is his, it's like his mirror, you know. People see, they see him. Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, Chad got excited. He said, repeat that. 
the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of Jesus. So when we talk about the what what is the fruit of the Spirit? The life of the Lord. So he produces it, we bear it, the fruit is the fruit of Jesus. And once we're in the vine, because he said, I'm the vine, you're the branches, and you'll bear fruit, but it's all about him, of course. So it's all Jesus. When people love the Lord, when you see his love in them, his love for the lost, his love for his people, oh, dear Lord, it it, it changes lives when people see Jesus in us. It changes them completely. So, now, once that fruit is in our our life and is seen in, in our life, let's go to John 15. Let's look at verse 1 and verse 2. I am the true vine. My father is the husbandman or the vine dresser. Every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he taketh away. But every branch that beareth fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now keep in mind all I've, I, that I've said, the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit of Jesus. He is the fruit of the Spirit. And we're, and we're going to see now the fruit of the Spirit in nine beautiful clusters. It's all about the Lord. It's all Him. Because it says fruit, it doesn't say fruitsa, the fruit, singular fruit of the Spirit. So the Lord said again that he is the true vine, the Father is the vine dresser, every branch in the Lord that bears not fruit, again, singular, not fruits, he takes away. And every and every branch that bears fruit, he will purge it, he, he will he will. Uh, prune it, Uh, uh, he prepares it for growth, basically. So that is his responsibility, to keep it productive. The Father's responsibility is to keep your life, my life, productive. But we have to cooperate with the Lord. Um, And for that to happen, God gives us grace. Now, there's an amazing revelation in Luke 13. Let's go to Luke 13 and let's look at verse 6. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. He came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of the vineyard, and that word dresser means keeper, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? He answered and said to him, Lord, let it alone this year also. Till I dig it, so till I dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit, well, but if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. Now, I, I, I want you to, know, to uh, notice something quite powerful. It says here that this man who planted the fig tree came looking for fruit, didn't find any. And then he said, then said he unto the dresser, behold these three years. This is really important to, to understand why the three years. These three years, I come seeking fruit, but I find none. Cut it down. But then, he said, in verse 8, let it alone this year also, four years. If it doesn't bear fruit after four years, cut it down. I think there's a spiritual mystery here. There's a, there's a spiritual revelation here. That God works with us. Uh, God Almighty says, listen, I'm responsible for the productivity, but you have to cooperate with me. Um, for that to happen, I'll give you grace, I'll give you time, but that time is limited. How long? Four years. 
It's, it's all in there. Maybe you've never heard that before. But why would the Lord say that? Okay, Lord, here's the tree doing nothing for three years. Let's cut it down. No, no, no. Give it one more year. Let's see what, what happens. We'll, we'll do a little extra work with it. We'll, uh, we'll, dig, we'll dig around it. We'll, 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 we'll put some uh, uh, fertilizer. And let's see what happens. And God often will do that with us. He gives us time to produce fruit. Wow. I pray the Lord is really speaking to you. Someone needs to hear this. You've neglected the Lord. You've neglected the house of the Lord. You've neglected the word of the Lord. You're wondering why your life is in the mess it's in. You can can fix all that up so quick because the Lord has not left you. But be careful if you neglect the Lord too many times. If you, if you don't uh, cooperate with, with the Lord and seek the Lord and read his word and go to church, uh, eventually there'll be no strength in you to go back because there'll be too many strongholds in your life that the enemy will build to cause you to stay away. You remember last week uh, when, I taught, when I taught on bondage and I gave you the steps into bondage. If you missed that teaching, you need to go back and hear it. So uh, remember where we regress first, we go back into old behavior, and then we repress where we don't say thank you anymore to the Lord and all that. So that was a few days ago. I taught on freedom from bondage, and I showed you the steps backwards. That's why it says, be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. So it's possible to go backwards. I I may be talking to someone who has been going back into the world and your heart has gone cold. I I, I don't want to see this happen to you that uh, we read about in this uh, very amazing and frightening parable, frankly. Uh, Let's give it one more year and then we're going to cut it off. Because the Lord is very, very clear on this in John 15. If a fruit does not bear, if, if the tree, if the vine does not, or the branch, I should say, does not bear fruit, it's cut off. It's cut off. And, and we have to remember, and I wasn't planning on saying all this, but I think sometimes, you know, it's good to, to remind people of what Proverbs 20, Proverbs 29, verse 1 says, He that being often reproved hardeneth his neck shall suddenly be destroyed, and that without remedy. So God gives us time, you know, to repent. He works with us. He works with us. And maybe there's someone out there that needs to hear this. So uh, tomorrow I'm going I'm to continue the teaching on the fruit of the Spirit, because I'm going to give you the nine fruit of the Spirit. Really, when you read this, when you see and you understand what I'm going to say, you see Jesus in, in all of it. Um, no, you know what? Let me, let, me, let me begin now. I just have a few more minutes. I think maybe I should just continue and then continue with it tomorrow. And I pray that you will join me tomorrow. But I, I just had to say what I wanted to say here. It's important uh, neglect is a high price, precious people of God. Neglect is a very high price. I remember Miss Kuhlman talking about how on the day when the Lord returns, our tears will be too late, they'll be ignored. He said, She said repentance will be too late then. But So this is the time to repent. This is the time to come back to the Lord and live for the Lord. Okay, so let's go to Galatians. I, I pray that this is really touching someone and maybe someone needed to hear that. And really it's a, it's a warning to all of us because it says take heed lest, lest you fall. So nobody is strong enough to remain standing without the Lord, you know. So we all have to be, uh, you know, watchful, be, be alert, watch and pray as the, as, as, as the Lord Jesus says. All right. Uh, In Galatians 5, verse 22 and 23, but the fruit of the Spirit, now this is all Jesus, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, 
gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Nine. Now this is again one fruit with nine clusters. It's amazing. There's nine gifts and nine clusters of the fruit. Love. Okay. The key to all other is here we we see the first one is directed towards the Lord and given supernaturally. The fruit called love is given by the Holy Spirit because we read in Romans 5 and verse 5, it says, And hope make it not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, which is given to us. So once we're abiding in the vine, once we've been planted properly, which I already shared with you, the word of God and fellowship, then love begins to flow. And that love is so important because it's really the the foundation of all the other fruit that we're going to look at here. Uh, In Revelation 2.4, it says the lack of love will bring the rebuke of the Lord, and we don't want that. And, and once that love is in there, it will bring us into the fullness of God. So the love of God produces the fullness of God. Ephesians 3, Ephesians 3, and verse 18. And it looks like I may have to continue tomorrow, but I think it's good that I started with this. Ephesians 3, 18, 19. May be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth, length, depth, and height, meaning of the love of God, and to know the love of Christ, which path is knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Isn't that glorious? So the love of God, given by the Holy Spirit, brings us into the fullness of the Lord. Okay, I'm going to stop here and continue tomorrow on the eight uh, fruit, not fruits, of the Spirit. And I pray the Lord will really use that and it'll all be in your life. Because listen, I said it earlier, it's possible to miss heaven having the gifts. It's not possible to miss heaven having the fruit. So if you want to be guaranteed heaven, you must have the fruit in your life. Dear Jesus, thank you for your word. I pray that the fruit of the Spirit will be in all of us, Lord. That we will always abide in you, the true vine will abide in you and your word will abide in us that we might bear fruit for your glory and honor for the rest of our days. To you be all the glory, precious Jesus. And God's people said, amen and amen. Well, thank you for being with me. Have a most blessed Christmas. Join me please tomorrow as I finish this beautiful teaching that is 